Hey, hey, it's me, Brian, coming at you from House Arrest, and this week on House Arrest, decided to take this outside today. Um, and by outside, I mean in the garage, facing to the outside. <laughs> and I wanted to let Zephyr run around the dog that we have here. It's been a pretty out of the ordinary week. Uh, a lot of strange things happened, um, some upsetting things, uh, and it has to do with other people, so I'm not going to share anyone's business here um, but some stuff that had to do with me as well and um, none of that the details really matter anyway it's more just uh, that it put me off kilter you know it's like this is uh, I, I was speaking last week about how I had kind of had a week where I was off off my game a little bit and then it, I was followed by uh, it was directly followed by the week that I just had which was much stranger and so uh, I've been out of schedule, out of my routine a little bit, um, which is okay. And the reason that's okay is because things are always going to happen. You know, this is maybe a good time to talk about this anyway, because the holidays are approaching, or I guess they're among us now. And that is, uh, regardless of whether, you know, the holidays hold good experiences or bad experiences for you generally. Um, they tend to disrupt our, our normal, the normal flow of our, of our lives. But regardless of whether it's the holiday season or just random things that happen in our lives, things will be disrupted. Things will always be disrupted. It's not, it's never, it's never smooth sailing in this life. We always never know what's going to happen. We never know what's coming at us. And uh, we never know what we're going to have to deal with uh, at any given moment. So the disruptions themselves, we shouldn't really treat as unexpected because we should always expect the unexpected. And when you're thrust out of your normal routine, the fact that you were thrust out of it isn't a problem. The, 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 um, it's just kind of a test, really. And the test is how quickly can you return to your normal routine or how quickly can you return to uh, a baseline that you that you've established uh, whether or not that needs to be altered you know when things change you know that's that um, happens too but how much how quickly can you go from being sent into disorder and lack of discipline and chaos back to you know, order and, and, and progress in your personal life. I've started to recognize that in my life up to this point, I have, with, with regard to this getting off track thing, um, my instinct has been up, up to this point to beat myself up when I get off track. Stuff sends me off track and then I feel guilty and I beat myself up for it. Um, that's, uh, I, I like punish myself mentally. I get really hard on myself. I get down on myself and that almost makes it worse and harder for me to get back on track. And what I've recognized lately is that the game isn't to stay on track and never get knocked off. The game is to, when you get knocked off, to just be able to accept that it's happened humble yourself and then get back on right this is um this is something that uh you know is very obvious and when you're trying to get off drugs and stuff it's not it's it's not like when you this is this is one of the problems that i have with in a aa mentality is the like and i understand where it uh, comes from, but it's just not what works for me. It's the idea that like, you know, somebody could be sober and can be, you know, and they count their days and they rack up their time in months and years and you get chips and stuff. And then if you do something that's considered a, a slip up or a relapse, you're back to zero again, right? You've, you've completely lost all of that progress. And um, I can understand how that uh, stands as a de deterrent to messing up, especially the more time you've racked up, right? But then, um, to me, that was always like, if you do mess up, then it, it 
seems like, okay, now that I've messed up, I might as well, you know, since, since I am at zero anyway again, since I've lost all of my progress, um, I, I might as well just uh, wallow here for a while th th instead of get back on uh, track as quickly as possible, right? You know, I'm, I'm at zero, might as well enjoy it while I'm here or whatever, might as well just, you know, get this out of my system while I'm here, but that never works because then you just stay there longer, right? Um, for me, it always seemed like it would make more sense to, to think of it in a way as like, okay, when something happens, the, the, you don't lose all your progress, you don't lose all everything you've gained, you just, the, the objective now is to be like, okay, cool, we all make mistakes, things happen, let's, let's see how quickly we can get back on. And like, you know, it was, maybe there should be some like point system around that. Like, it's like, oh, how quickly can you get back? I don't know, I would love to hear about what some of you um, AANA people uh, think about this. Um, just, I'd love to, uh, you know, just sort of exchange ideas about this because um, to me, like the, the thing is, not every slip up is equal to every other slip up, you know? There's, there's different degrees of slipping up, you know? And if we're talking about uh, dr like relapsing on drugs, um, you know, a Bud Light at a family barbecue isn't the same thing as, you know, a, a four-day coke bender. Impulsively running out to the streets to buy heroin and meth and slam it isn't the same kind of a relapse as uh, having a microdose psilocybin trip in your therapist's office with the intention of working through some trauma. You know, these are completely different things, but they're weighed exactly the same in, in the context of falling off. So what I'm trying to say is that, you know, regardless of whether we're talking about alcohol and drugs or just life in general, this track that we want to be on, that we put ourselves on, that we say, okay, this is the direction I want to be going in my life. These are the things I want to be cultivating day by day um, and staying on track with. When we fall off uh, track of those things, and for me personally in, in the context of my life right now, uh, what I've fallen off of is just that, you know, my strict eating uh, regimen. I've, I've gotten back on it this week a little bit from last week. Um, or, but over just my like exercise routine and stuff, I've been getting back on it right now this week. I've been getting back on it regardless of all the crazy stuff that happened and the disruptions and the weirdnesses in, in this week. Um, I've been getting back on, you know what I mean? I, I haven't jumped back on as quickly and aggressively as I would have hoped, but I'm still hopping back on right now. You know, every day is a new day to try again, to, to just, to just get it back together. And, but I haven't lost the progress that I've made, you know, with, with these months of, of eating right and exercising and, and doing everything I've been doing and like the, my mindfulness practice and all that stuff. Like I still have all that gain just because I fell off for a minute um, because, you know, life got hectic and we're in the holidays, whatever it is. Uh, doesn't mean that I still didn't gain all that progress. And so, so now I'm, uh, I, my thing is just how quickly can we get back on track? That's the game. We're going to fall off. We're going to get out of sorts. How quickly can we get back on track? You know, how quickly can we humble ourselves and realize like, okay, this is, you know, whatever. And it's not always a bad thing that we fall off track. It's okay when, when things are going on and we like decide to indulge or we decide to get off on purpose or skip this so that we could do this, whatever it is, you know, that's all okay. But instead of just feeling like, oh, I've missed a workout now. I'm like, might as well just pig out and not do anything, you know, forever. Like how quickly can we just be like, okay, I missed a week of working out. But, you know, like, okay, cool, I recognize that. I, I, I recognize that I, uh, you know, did that and how quickly can I get back on track? This getting back on track thing is really analogous to mindfulness practice. If anyone's ever uh, tried to do that or gotten into that at all, the idea with mindfulness, you know, is uh, people think that the idea is to keep your mind blank and to keep it, you know, completely free of thought. That's the goal. That's not really the goal. The goal is actually to recognize that you're always going to have thoughts popping up in your head. And it's just the goal is to recognize those as thoughts. And when you get tangled up in them and carried away by them, you want to 
the, the goal is to recognize that that's happened and then start, begin again, you know? And that's the practice. And that's, you get, you get, that's the gain, really. You're flexing this muscle every time you recognize it and pull it back. Recognize it and begin again. Recognize it and begin again. That's where you're making gains, is when you're flexing that muscle. You know, that's, uh, that's, those reps are what, are what is getting you somewhere, not, it's not like a, oh man, I'm lost in thought. I totally, you know, I'm so bad at this. No, of course you're going to get lost in thought. But how, how, you know, how quickly can you recognize it, humble yourself, bring it back to center, begin again. Anyway, that's kind of what's been on my mind uh, the last few days. And so I just wanted to share that. And let's go back inside for song of the week, which is Hold On by Tom Waits um, from the Mule Variations album. Now, if you've never listened to Tom Waits before, he's very uh, kind of a, an acquired taste for some. He's got so much different stuff. He's a brilliant songwriter. Um, he has this very characteristic uh, voice that has changed over the years. When he first started out, it was pretty raspy, but now it's just so... Like you can barely understand him sometimes. But uh, he, just such a character artist and and brilliant through and through um if you've never gotten into tom waits definitely worth worth getting into and checking out he's got so much cool stuff um if you don't like some of his stuff it's very likely you'll find something else of his that you do like uh, very very cool i also uh, wanted to give a quick shout out to my good friend brian bear brian bear is somebody who hit me up on facebook this week just to see how life is going and stuff i haven't talked to him in years uh, i grew up with him and uh, the reason he's getting the shout out this week is because uh, we started exchanging um, original music that we've been working on and he has uh, been very uh persistent about motivating me to get going on making some stuff and he's been very collaborative and, and willing to help and 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 we and I've been uh, listening to his stuff and we've been kind of collaborating so um, I'm gonna actually get to work on that right now after I'm done uh, with posting this video so a shout out to Brian I love you uh, if you're watching this I don't know if you are or will but uh, shout out to Brian Bear regardless thank you guys for watching it's uh, it's uh, it's life. Life just keeps going, and it keeps being what it whatever it is, and we just have to keep, you know, taking it in, and uh, hopefully enjoying it, and and finding all the love and and just beauty and awe that there is to to experience from from this crazy crazy thing called life. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you next week.